Welcome back to Biggie Outdoors at the top of the hour. We welcome in those just tuning in. And for those of you who have been listening, we're headed into another great hour of outdoor radio with Biggie and Brandon here at Biggie Outdoor Studios. This hour is brought to you by one of our great supporters at Outdoor Edge Knives and Cutlery, makers of the swing blade and other great tools for the outdoorsman. Check them out at OutdoorEdge.com and get yourself one of the best hunting knives or cutlery sets you'll ever own. Also buy Koala Buck Coolers, portable walk-in coolers for the sportsman, a great way to save your game when you're traveling on a hunt and want to keep your meat cool. Find them online at koalabuck.com. Now, stay tuned for more Biggie Outdoor Radio. Biggie Outdoors, located at Cedar Creek, is reopening its doors soon after its new remodeling. Home to the area's first and only big game hunting museum, with educational exhibits displaying animals from around the world and facts around the hunter's contributions to their survival. Pick up some unique souvenirs and gifts from the museum and from the Big E TV shows. Meet the pro staff from Big E TV and Big E Outdoor Radio, a great place to stop in with the whole family. And while you're there, book your next hunting trip with the Big E Outdoors Professional Hunters. With over 21 personal hunting destinations worldwide, you'll be sure to find a quality getaway with the Biggie Outdoors destinations. Biggie Outdoors is also home to Adrenaline High Geographic. Check us out online at BiggieOutfitters.com and register to win a free hunt. Biggie Outdoors at Cedar Creek. Welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio, top of a new hour. And before the break, we are talking about the uh, recent CWD supposed find up north Brandon and uh, you know uh, well the one the one thing is what they did then is they use that as an excuse now to shut down baiting in a three county area up there huh um, so now that's another reason that people are all complaining oh no we can't bait in these areas uh, so um, Oneida County um, let's see what counties no Paul let's see Oneida County, Vilas, and Forest Counties. Now, now there, now there's a baiting ban or a feeding ban, which you know this. If, if CWD is truly airborne or whatever, it could then then um, the baiting ban isn't going to stop anything anyway. The animals are still there. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're not traveling across three counties well, and to go then, and get a, a feed of corn. And then you know. get this: they say there's no cure for it. There's no cure for it. There's no way to stop it. But the same thing, they say that when these people have the CWD, they tell them that when they leave their premises, going in and out of there, they have to spray themselves down with two parts per million solution of bleach water, and then they're good to go. So, in other words, if they're saying that, then they're saying that a two part per million solution of bleach water would uh, cure CWD. Hmm. That's what they're saying. Because they're saying it'll kill it. And that's uh, signed by uh, the the head of the Department of Ag, Dr. Paul, Dr. Uh, Yeah, McGraw, whatever the heck his name is, Dr. McGraw. So. If if that's the case, <laughs> they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. If you've got uh, CWD on your farm, get the deer out of there and spray the area with two parts per million bleach, and then work <laughs> up the ground and you're ready to go. Should be back in business. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. <laughs> or. <laughs> I or I haven't heard that one yet. That's funny to me. I, I yeah. Guess, or uh, or you should be able to just um, start putting out some waterers out there with two parts per million bleach in it. Let the deer drink it, and they should be cured, right? Hmm. I think we drink more than that in our city water. It's, hmm. It just shows the stupidity of the of the uh, of the whole process. I guess is what I'm saying. You know, I'm going to tell you that this is, there is a disease out there that does stay in the soil, and there is a connection. 
there's a guy that is right now being depopulated because of because of CWD. And, they, and I'm not naming his farm on purpose, but if anybody goes looking, they're going to figure it out. He's in northwestern Wisconsin, okay? This guy, everything is was fine on his farm until he bought an additional 40 acres. The 40 acres that he bought and moved and expanded his breeding operation on prior to him buying it at one point was an old goat farm. Huh. And goats and sheep are susceptible to a disease called scrapies. And scrapies is exactly the same prion type disease, brain disease, as CWD. Now, the, the state and the Department of Ag is trying to say that it's not the same thing, but it is exactly the same disease. It'll show up the same, same kind of tests, everything. Huh. And it's transmittable to deer. Interesting. Very interesting. It has been proven more than once that it's transmittable to deer. They've put deer in with deer deer in with sheep that had scrapies and they've caught it. Now, do you see double fences around any of these sheep farms around here? Nope, none. Okay, and these deer these deer are jumping in and out of these sheep farms and grazing with them and everything like that. But yet we're popping up with supposed C W D in the wild. Yeah. We got sheep running around all over the place. And now a guy that just expanded his operation onto an old sheep or goat ranch just all of a sudden popped up with CWD and he didn't have it. He had a certified herd. So there's a correlation here, but the Department of Ag is failing to see it or failing to admit that they see it. I guess yeah. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Here's another thing. Bovine t tuberculosis, TB, yeah, susceptible to humans too. Is by the way, it's, it, it's it's a bad thing. You don't want that. Okay. It goes from cows to deer as well, and it's it's a bad deal. Wiped out some some states. I mean, it's almost wiped out the herds of deer. They had big problems with it, but we don't hear too much about that, and we don't see anybody with fences and double fences around their cattle farms. All you see is a wire around some guys' cattle farms. Yeah, and you go by some of these cattle are wheezing and coughing and pretty sick, and some of these cattle farms are in pretty rough shape. Nobody's really keeping an eye on that, and the deer can go in and out of all that. They don't they don't worry about any of that. <laughs> yeah. So there's diseases out there all over the place, and they're not they're they're picking one out, and making a big deal out of it, but they're failing to. If you know if you're going to watch all these diseases, heck, there's a lot of stuff you could watch. They're wasting tax money. When it comes down to it, yeah. chasing something they, they can't do anything about. Mother Nature is going to police its stuff. It's going to clean stuff up. You've got you've got blue tongue. You've got the EHD thing out there that can come in. You got the TB. We've got scrapies in the sheep, and that can go to deer. Hey, if it's not affecting people, then let Mother Nature take its course because there's nothing you can do about it. You know what? It could be though. It could be though, because I got really dry skin last week and I had the scrapies really bad. <laughs> and last night I ate a blue Jolly Rancher and I had blue tongue. You had blue tongue. Yep. Oh yeah. Let's see, there you go. Yeah. That's kind of. It's not the same. Oh okay. Well, that would be the scratchies you had, not the scrapies. Yeah, the the scratchies, I guess. Yeah. The scratchies, itchy yeah. scratchies. I had the itchy scratchies. <laughs> Well, anyhow, like I said, you know, so they they did put a feeding ban on those counties. Like that's going to help anything, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know. And and the other thing is, is this guy's deer. I mean, they've been this place has been fenced for many years. You now the guy that owns it now just bought it, yeah. so it's been fenced for many years. And so now all of a sudden they're putting a feeding ban out there. I mean, heck, if it's out there, it. First of all, if it's out in the wild, it didn't come from this place. And if it's out in, in, in more than likely, the deer that this guy inherited when he bought the place, <laughs> you know, got it from the wild, if it does have it, and it's 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 a ridiculous mess. Anyway, his deer can't get anywhere, but uh, he's catching all the, all the heck from all these people that are uneducated out there. So get educated before you start accusing people of stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
the what's funny is you're still finding all these articles that are popping up on here saying you know the state deer kill is expected to be up so they don't even have the numbers in yet uh because well i guess they're still going through the muzzle order season or something but how how could their how could their numbers how could they not have them in yet if they were saying before the rifle season came in that you would be able to watch online for a within the within 15 minute up to date deer kill uh i guess tally but now all of a sudden they just they they're saying that they don't have all their numbers in yet it says this is coming from madison it says the electronic does not mean immediate when it comes to counting deer so hunters are going to have to wait for the final deer harvest numbers hmm um, you know, that sounds to me like, in other words, they're going to fudge the numbers so that they can come up with what they want to tell us because they don't want to tell everybody how far down it actually was. You know, uh, it says it is due to the rate at which the, the, the data is being processed or something. Well, we all know you punch something into a computer, you hit enter, and it's in. So... Obviously, there's some funny stuff going on down there in Madison, and they don't want to tell anybody that we were right and the deer count is down. So, you know, and they're trying to compare it. The, this, this is coming from one of their head guys down there, uh, Tom Hag from the DNR. If you watch a Packers game, you'll, you'll know you're, going to, you're not going to get all the statistics after each quarter. Uh, whatever you know, what don't start comparing your deer season to the Packers or the football or anything like that because um, you know you guys made a program and had plenty of time to work on it. And if people are entering in the stuff as fast as it comes to Madison and you enter in the numbers, you got the guy's license number. He scans it in, enters it, it goes into a computer. The computer should be able to tell you whether it's a duplicate or not, and it's done. So uh, now, now they're back up to uh, 204,000. They were down to 201,000. What they, they, they don't want to tell that it's down. It's down from last year. So I think what they're doing is they're fudging the numbers. I'm not going to trust anything that they come out with. That's the end of that. We'll be right back after this with some more Biggie Outdoor Radio. Hey, welcome back with uh, Brandon and Patrick here at Biggie Outdoor Radio. Brandon, uh, what do you think about all this <laughs> hoo-ha going on here with the... Uh, the deer count and the license sales and everything. You know, I, I I think it's ridiculous that they need more time, and I really think it's ridiculous that they compared it to the fact that, you know, you can't get up to the quarter stats on the Packer game and all that. Let me tell you something. Anybody who plays fantasy football knows that you can have up to the play stats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know exactly what's going on in the game, and you don't have to be playing fantasy football to get those stats either. You can you can get them. They're right there. Somebody punches them in, and they're there. It you know, hard. and then they're sitting here saying that uh, even though the people didn't have to punch a tag and all that, that opening weekend kill rates are up. Well, well, how can you say that? And then in the next breath, you say you don't know what the numbers are. Come on. You know, it's 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 out of both sides of their mouth. You know. So I I believe that uh, there's a lot of funny business going on with it. Um, it was interesting. There's another article in here that this is posted by a father and son, and um, it's about a kid that that shot two deer with one shot. And um, you know, it's one of them stories that evidently they were legal. So he was fortunate about that. But it's one of them deals where sometimes, you know what, you're better off to not brag about certain things or not say certain things because this is how you end up getting yourself in trouble and you didn't really intend to do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
news of a deer hunter, 10 at the time, killing two deer with one shot was reported statewide during the 2015 gun season. Uh, from the father, his hunting son, and editorial comments, questions by rhetoric, it was looked upon as a very lucky and maybe positive uh, hunting incident uh, of which somebody should be proud because the father had the, an appropriate tag and because the Wisconsin has a group hunting law, everything turned out to be legal and safe. Um, but looking back, it says that the, the editor says, I believe the father should have remained silent and not boasted about the incident. Um, I don't know because this, this actually goes into that knowing your target and beyond. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, you probably shouldn't, if, if it was intentional, I don't believe you should be trying to take two deer with one shot because you don't know for a fact that the you're, where the bullet's going to come out and where it's going to take the next deer. Yeah, exactly. So you don't know how clean of a shot it's going to be. Um, but for another teaching point, it does show you what a bullet will do after it goes through an animal. It shows you that your bullet continues and can still kill. Yeah. So you got to be paying attention to that. I mean, he killed two deer. Yeah. It could have very well been a hunter or a house or a car or anything. Yeah. You know, you know and like we've been talking about a lot the last few weeks, you know, Knowing your target and beyond, they teach you that in hunter safety, and they even talk about it here in this article. You know, that's another thing, too. If it wasn't intentional, yeah, that's another teaching moment there. You know, thank God it was just another deer. But knowing your target and beyond, you know, if you intended to shoot one deer and you got two, you didn't know the beyond. You know, and yeah. obviously, you know, this was a young boy. You know, he's learning. Yeah, but this is not a newsworthy thing. And uh, even the editor of this article even says it. You know, the father, yeah. Yeah. it's not really the son's fault. I mean, the son's 10 years old. But the father should have known better than to be bragging this up and making this a news thing. Oh, you know, I read my son shot, do with one shot. No, this, number one, this should have been kept quiet. Number two, the father should have been mentoring the son properly and telling him why that shouldn't have happened and why they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Two, one at a time. Not two at a time. I highly doubt that they intentionally tried to get two at a time. Yeah. Um, it just happened, and you don't, you don't, uh, you don't try to do that. No. And and if the father did try to coach him into doing that, that's bad mentoring right there. You don't you don't teach your kid to take shoot two animals with one. So I think that that I don't think that's a good. I don't think it's a good. I don't think it's a good story. Uh, sometimes they, they put stuff on here that I just I don't I don't agree with. But uh, heading into the winter, I, I, I do you think we're going to get enough ice to go ice fishing here anytime soon? Well, I certainly hope so. I don't know that I would trust it yet. So if you're one of these people that's out there looking for first ice, I would strongly recommend no no Christmas ice fishing. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be people out there that are going to try. But during the day, folks, it is getting warm enough. I wouldn't be trusting this ice. Um, you got to remember, once you fall through that stuff, you're not going to come back up in the same hole. <laughs> and, you know, we don't need for for people to be having and becoming statistics, I guess is what we want to say. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of nice ice shacks out there that people have sitting in their yards waiting to go out. Just... Go out there and have a beer in them or something, but don't uh, don't be losing your ice shacks by trying to get them out of the water too soon. <laughs> uh, it says uh, first ice has already started to arrive in some northern destinations, uh, but you know people uh, make sure that uh, that you're testing it, and you know everybody wants to try their new lures, and everybody wants to get out there and be the first one and try to to, uh, you know, catch the fish. I know the first ice is when the fish are supposedly biting the best. I'm not that big of an ice fisherman. Oh, the fish bite good for me and my buddies all year. I'm not going to go out there on an inch and a half of ice. <laughs> and I'm not going to go out there on is, is four it, or five inches of ice with the know, weather we've been having. Is a pan full of fish really worth risking your life? That's what I want to, you know. That's the thing is I know these guys are like, hey, you know what? I mean, even when we go hunting, 
you don't go out there and intentionally risk your ice hunting. But these guys that go out there ice fishing, they intentionally risk their lives to be the first guy on the ice to catch a meal of fish. Now think about that. You're out there walking, and if you fall through, you're dead. Or a darn good chance you're dead. And they do that to catch a meal of fish. Hmm. Are you that hungry that you have to risk your life to catch that meal of fish? Wait till the ice is safe, guys. You know, uh, especially on a year like this. You know, I'm not trying to discourage you. I know ice fishing is a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, you're going to run into some very unsafe spots. It's getting up in the 40s during the day. We're getting some 50s. Getting some rain. It makes ice weak. And you're going to, you know, you hit them spots where the springs are. And even if you think, oh, this is a spot where we walk out every year. This is always the safest spot. You can run into bad ice. Don't be, don't be that guy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Just give it plenty of time, and and uh, you know, God, I just I just can't tell you enough. You know, I see some guys out there sometimes, and they're sitting in there, and you can see that they're looking right through the ice, you know, and they they go out there with a little chip their way out there, and they get as far out as they can, and they're ten feet from open water, sitting on a bucket out there fishing. <laughs> I just I don't understand that uh, because I just cannot understand that a guy is that hungry that he has to get all the way out there and risk his life for. The meal of fish, or for those few panfish that he's going to catch, it's not like he's catching, you know, uh, some kind of a world-class whitetail or a world-class elk or anything like that. They're catching well, no, a, a meal of fish because they're on the lake, Dad. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Elk and deer aren't going to be underwater. <laughs> well, what you never heck? know. <laughs> Come on, man. Jeez, Almighty. I'm just saying. But, I'm just saying the trophy quality. I'm just but saying. You got, you know. All right, now, now think about this though. I mean, yeah, it is a bad idea, but think about the think about the lengths that we go to to get a good hunt or get a good thrill, you know, of a hunt. You know, sometimes even there's that. people. There's people that. To them, fishing is just as much of an adrenaline rush right. as the hunt for them. I understand that. But the thing is, is that to go out there and get your average hunt, if you were going out there on a, even, even in a Wisconsin whitetail hunt, there is nowhere near the risk to your life on a, on a Wisconsin whitetail hunt average yeah. or going out and hunting grouse or going out and hunting squirrels or rabbits or anything else as there is. Walking out on water yeah, and with I, an inch of ice. And, and, I wasn't, and I'm not saying that. I mean, I understand that. You know, it's, yeah. it is dangerous. But I'm just saying to some people, some people don't see it the way that we do, where, you know, you're just going out there for a meal of fish. You know, some people, they're going out there, you know, they want that trophy walleye. They want that tro- trophy pike. You know, they're, they're going out there trying to do their best. Yeah, to catch a pike. <laughs> I, I don't even want to go down that road with you <laughs> because you and I are both thinking of the same song and go figure it's by a group of guys that sing the hunting Hoopers. songs yeah. in, Catch a bike. <laughs> in Wisconsin Yeah, it's not the Hoopers it is Shad Rap Shad Rap oh, that's right yeah. Shad Rap. yeah okay <laughs> but yeah um, I mean to some people that's their rush yeah we see it a little bit differently but there's reasons why people want to take that risk I guess so. So, let's take a quick break, and we'll come right back after these messages, folks. Welcome back to Biggie Outdoor Radio. This segment is brought to you by Bruce Brothers, located on Highway X in Weston, just off of Highway 29. Fresh burger ground daily from country fresh meats, and awesome hand cut fries with all the tasty seasonings to choose from. They got plenty of tap brews with 35 beers on tap. If you haven't made your way on over to Brews Brothers yet, you need to head on over and check them out. And tell them Big E sent you, and they'll give you a little something special from us just for mentioning it. But head on over there, and you'll be hooked up with the best burgers in town. That's Brews Brothers on Highway X in Weston.
Welcome back to some more Biggie Outdoor Radio. Hey, Brandon, we're talking about ice fishing. First of all, we need to get us an ice shack. Because, you know, I'm not one of these guys for sitting out there on a bucket. You know, the thing is, is I can't decide if I want to go and buy an ice shack. I'm not. I'm going over to see Denny at the shed shop, and I'm getting me something that I can put a nice heater in, and, and I can use it for... Is it going to be on a trailer? Like a trailer frame? Well, no, but we'll get something that we can slide up on a trailer, and then we can winch it up on, and then we can winch yeah. it off, you know? we got to get something that's really cool. And, and then he's got lots of buildings over there. Yeah. Just go go over there and go up 45, up toward Anna 1. Can't miss him. Right on the highway. There you go. So, or Eland, or whatever it is there, up there. I think Elon and Anna, well, they're all up in the same neck of the woods up there. <laughs> you know, but just head on up the highway there. You can't miss him. Down the left-hand side of the road. Sheds everywhere. Grab yourself some. You could have yourself an ice fishing shack slash deer hunting blind. Yeah, slash doghouse worthy of living in when you get in trouble with the wife. I'm never in the doghouse. Huh. Well, you haven't been married long enough. That's why. Yeah. Once you get married for a little while, you'll end up in the doghouse, and you got to have a good one. Denny has one, actually. He's got he's got a hammock in his out there oh. back in his woods. He's got a the, he's got the ultimate deer blind. Hmm. I don't really think he sees a lot of deer when he's laying in his hammock, but uh, I'm not really sure whether he goes out there deer hunt or just to get away from the wife <laughs> himself. <laughs> you know, put yourself in the doghouse for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good yeah, lord. Yeah, I'm going hunting. I'll be back in a week. <laughs> He's only 100 yards behind the house. But. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you in a week. Oh, good lord. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, another thing I was thinking of, too, that might not be a bad idea is, you know, get an old camper. There's a lot of people that do that. Why would you want that? That is, have you that ever, does have, not have look you ever, comfortable. It is. It really. Have you ever gone out on the ice? With holes in the floor of a camper. And sat in a camper that you you and your redneck buddies installed a wood stove in. And you're sitting out there and you're just sitting around a table playing cards and drinking soda. soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a good time. Eh? Hey. Yeah. Watching tip-ups. Yeah. All night long. Do you, do, you, do you put holes in the floor so you can jig? Yes. In a camper? Yes. And they're actually designed really well, actually. The the way that we had the floor designed in the these campers that I've been in. Yeah. It's a piece of the floor that has been modified that you pull up, mm. and you've got the holes in there. Yeah. And then you can put the floor back on. It's like, it's like framed. Sure. And you can put the floor back on. Uh-huh. Amazing. It is. It's, it's really neat. I know you don't see no. how cool that is, but I think it's awesome. But that's just because I'm a little more country than you are. Don't even try to argue me. We all know it's true. See, but that's Our not, listeners know see, it's true. Okay, that's not neat you know, enough look for at me. The beard. I, I look at that and it's like, Look okay, at the beard. I mean, yeah. that way... The thing is, is okay. Here you are. You're sitting in this old jalopy camper, and I'll be sitting in this nice little wooden shed with alone. nice windows in it. No, I won't be alone. Oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll have more people. All right. Because I'll have the grill on the front front deck, and yeah. and uh, I'll have I'll yeah. have I'll have the stove going inside. The I'm gonna have stove. a generator. I'm gonna have lights on the windows, and it's gonna say have you party. Ever, have you ever been in a camper? With a disco ball and all the lights. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm telling you right now. Had, we'll it see. Had a karaoke machine. Okay, I'm, getting, a I'm putting a shed shop shed on the lake. You put your camper on the lake, and we'll see who gets more people. Done. Done. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I'm not saying that a shed shop shed isn't a good idea, but I'm, I'm also saying that. I mean, when you take an old camper and you bring that camper back to life, you know, the thing might sit for sale on the side of the road for $300 until it's buried in the ground. But some good old boy is going to come along, revive it, and that thing is going to live 
until it sinks. Well, what we'll have to do, <laughs> what we'll have to do is we'll no, you can't let it sink. No, you no. get you for sure. <laughs> but what we'll have to do is we'll, if that's if, why you if don't we, you don't put your name and address on it. You put your neighbor's name and address. <laughs> on it. <That's> what you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you. <laughs> See, I'm thinking you, ahead. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we could do is we could, uh, if we get enough ice to do this. Oh, we will. We will. Then we'll In fact, we'll we it. need enough ice to do this by the end of the month because we got a buddy coming over here from South Africa. Oh, he's not coming out until later. Well, what about the Vikings game? We're supposed to take him. I don't know if he's going to make it. Take him to Lambeau Field to watch the Packers lose, the, to watch the Packers beat the Vikings <clears throat> as long as Aaron Rodgers and the rest of his players show up. Well, you hope the Packers will beat the Vikings. Hopefully, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, hopefully I didn't tick too many people off there by, you know, speaking out against our green and gold. I'm a I'm a true Packers fan, but they've been showing some... Signs of weakness? Signs of weakness this season, yeah. They sure pulled that yeah. last one off by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, against the Lions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the Lions have been... The Lions beat them the time before, so... Well... I don't know. What then we, we got? And, and today, well, Sunday, we've got Dallas coming into Lambeau Field. And Tony Romo faked an injury because he was scared. Did he? Is he really injured? He is really injured, yeah. Is he? He got hurt feelings? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You saw my Facebook post, huh? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Well... You know what we do is maybe we'll we'll see what we can check with Wayne here and find out if he's actually gonna going to be uh, coming in January or not. But I think he's waiting now to come closer to March. Oh well, if, maybe we can get him to come up for one of the fisheries down south. Yeah, Re- really get him out. Hey there, Wayne, out on the ice with a pickup truck. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you today? I can't complain. All right. Hey, we're calling you uh, from the radio studio, and uh, oh, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. So what we're what we're trying to find out is, uh, are you still coming here in January to go to a Packer game with us, or are you not going to make it now? No, I'm going to be make it in January, but I'm definitely going to be there in March. Oh well, the Green Bay Packers do not play in March. You know that, right? Yeah, no, I'm. Uh... <laughs> so, but I'll be back in September again. In oh. September? Okay. There we go, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be hunting Alaska then. Yeah. So, and then after Alaska, I'm done. Oop. Oh, I think we lost Wayne. You're, you're, you're going in and out a little bit here. Yep. Oh, we lost him. We lost Wayne. Oh, man. Oh, uh, well, it sounds well, we had a good connection there for a little while. Yeah. Are you there yet? It says, it says it's trying to reconnect with him, so we might actually get him back on. But Maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, he said he's coming up in March, and then he's going to come up again in September. But uh, Well, in September, won't. we might be having a better year. We'll be back into a new season. Well, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a better year in September because we won't have four losses yet in September. Well, we, could, <laughs> we, couldn't, have, we couldn't have four losses. Exactly, exactly. So... Yeah, because we wouldn't have played that many games yet. <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, he's going to be coming in in uh, in March. So we'll maybe maybe we'll get him to a fishery because uh, let's see, if January, February, he's going to come at the beginning of March. So maybe we can get him to come end of February. Is he calling us back? He sure is. Yeah. All yeah. right, let's check with it. We lost you there, Wayne. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Are you out chasing oh, an elephant or a rhino or something or what? No, we actually just arrived here at Shoshaloza. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I know we do it. Well, uh, uh, yeah, no. when you come back in September, that's that's Green Bay Packers season again. We'll have to get you down here and get you to a game because... Yeah, that will definitely work. You definitely... Because so, the... I'll be, be hunting, hunting, hunting Alaska then, so, so I have to come. Okay, you're definitely our farthest away Packer fan. So, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. At least uh, yeah, that, that we know, sure. anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll make sure we got tickets for you when you come in September. You'll have to make sure you allow time for that. No, well, definitely. No, it sounds great. I think we'll have some good fun. All right, that sounds good. Well, all right, we'll we'll see you in um, in March when you come, and uh, hopefully we'll still have some good ice, and you can come and do some ice fishing with us. Yes, yes, that sounds good, sir. I'll see you in March, and I'll be probably be there on the around the 16th or so. Okay. All right. Well, safe travels to you, and uh, good luck there at Shoshaloza today. And um, we will, I guess, we'll talk to you later. I won't keep you. Sounds like you got a lot of work to do today. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Sir. We'll chat soon. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, there it was, folks. Uh, we're going to take another quick break here, and we'll be right back after these short messages. Hey, welcome back, Biggie Outdoor Radio, and uh, Brandon and I are back, and I think we got a caller here, another one calling in uh, from Kikuyu Lodge here. Just hang on one second here, and uh, hello, Harry. How you doing today? I uh, I just am calling in. Brandon and I are actually uh, in the studio recording our radio show. We thought we'd check in with you and find out how the animals are looking and how the weather's shaping up out there. Okay. At the moment, we're getting some rain. It's uh-huh. been very, very hot rain at the moment. And, uh, yeah, we've had our first batch of babies being born. Some impala and some springbuck and blessbucks, and we're waiting for the wildebeest and you know some of the other larger animals to start dropping their babies. So it's looking for a good season, looking like a good season. We've had lots and lots of rain, so it's looking good for next year. Well, that's uh, that's great. Um, we know that uh, there's been some hunters recently from our area that have come out there and hunted with you guys, and they've had had a good time and uh and the scenery out there on the cape is excellent it's because you get so much rain that's why yeah no definitely we've had you know i think this year we've had about double our yearly rainfall so it's it's making for a truly phenomenal season next year lots of food around oh that's great yeah I will tell you that when I was out there, I couldn't believe how much green vegetation you had compared to other parts of South Africa. <laughs> yeah, you? definitely. Yeah, we, we seem to be like in a green belt down here on the eastern Cape side of the coast, you know, which makes for a totally different scenario than what people are normally used to, you know, when they come in <laughs> to hunt with us. I think it's all going to be dry and dusty and, and dust bowls, but not really. It's quite the opposite. Yeah. Now, have you started hunting yet for this year, or when when do you start again? No, we'll start up. We'll start up in March. In March, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you for the season, and, uh, we're busy getting ready for uh, yeah, getting the lodge and some Christmas people staying at the lodge, but uh, over Christmas period. But other than that, we'll start hunting in March again. All right, the net. Just to get it right, that's the start of your fall, right? That's right, yeah. That's the, that's our fall season, yeah. What's the weather like right now? I mean, temperature-wise, well, how hot is right it? Right now, it, uh, okay, it's been up probably around 100 degrees today. Uh, quite humid, but it is starting to drizzle now, so we, we've probably got a, a frontal system moving through, bringing some rain and some relief. But it's been on average around 100 degrees every day. On average, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty hot. Yeah, well, that's the time of the year we don't want to come there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to the beach and you know have some beers. Then it's definitely a good time to be at the in South Africa, but not for hunting. It's a little bit hard at the moment. <laughs> Well, you know, right now we'd like to get you to come up here and you could hunt on the frozen water and go ice fishing with us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's something I'm not used to. <laughs> I would imagine not. <laughs> when uh, you are coming to the to the US here pretty soon to do some shows, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'll be heading out to do the uh, Dallas Safari Club and then the 
SCI International shows in Las Vegas in, in February. I'll be out there. Well, see, we'll have good ice at that time. If you want to swing up this way, we'll take you fishing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. But let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not very fond of anything cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got heaters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, is when it's cold, you can always put more clothes on, but you can only take so much off when it's hot. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I understand that, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of just what we get used to, you know. You grow up, you'll spend your life in Africa and or South Africa, and uh, you used to hot weather. And when it gets cold here, it's probably like a midsummer for you guys. Yeah. Oh, well, how about snow? Do you get any snow there? No, not not down this far south. No, no snow. I'd say probably about three hours north of us when you start hitting the mountains. You'll definitely get a bit of snow in winter time, but oh. not where we are. We do not. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, this is not. Definitely. This is not something that we want to do. Is come over there to see snow. You know. <laughs> no. Well, it has happened. We have had you know, clients come over sometimes, and what you know, it snows. But no, that's that's not the norm. It's, it's very rare. You know, we probably have at most it'll stick around for about a week, maybe two weeks, and then it's gone. That's so. not really a big issue. <laughs> well, it's just something to look at. Oh, wow, look, it's snowing. You know, you guys probably go, oh, it's snowing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. So uh, we, uh, how about the snakes? You got any of them out? Yeah, we've seen quite a lot of snakes. I must say, we've seen a lot of snakes. Uh, Cape Cobra, we've seen... Uh, the boomslang, we've seen some of them. We've seen some puff adders have been active, you know, with the heat. They're definitely a lot a lot active at the moment. But it's not a problem where you bump into them every day. But you do see them on the roads, crossing the roads, things like that. Well, the reason I ask is, you know, Brandon does not like snakes. I think I told you that when I was over there. So. Yeah, no, I believe that. I believe that. You know, I don't like snakes either, but I stay clear of them. And but you know you, you do come across them, <clears throat> but I've never been like I say that they were anywhere close to me for to be a problem. <clears throat> and I know the boom slang is a bad snake too. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, fortunately rather the the boom slang has got the the rear fang snake, so it's got to bite you like at the tip of your finger or in between your fingers, basically. So you you know you're pretty safe is where they're concerned. They don't really uh, bite you or attack you. They'll try and get away from you. But they're around. They are around. Yeah. But if they do bite you, you're really in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then you've got some trouble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well... Be you- okay for that one. Yeah, well, we're uh, we're planning on, on trying to figure out when exactly the time is best for us to come on over there and see you. Okay, okay. And and we are uh, we're we're of course telling people about Kikuyu Lodge and and the great place that you have there. I, I of all the places I've ever seen, I've never seen any lodge in South Africa with as great a view as you guys have. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I must say we're very fortunate with our scenery that we've got. You know that that alone makes the trip. Uh, you know it's, it's it's really a special place. People well, come there for the first time. They come back and they come back and they come back. I had uh, there there was a there was a couple that wanted to come there and the the. Uh, week didn't work out. You were booked, but they did get to hunt on your place when they were there, and they seen it. And they they told me they definitely want to come back and and hunt there in a couple of years because they just could not believe the okay, view. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think you know who they were when they when they were down there. They came and they got to be on your place, yeah. and I, I think they got their uh, wildebeest there actually. Okay, okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, with and them, yeah. Okay. So oh, good. That's, 
it would be good if they come back and spend some more time with us. Yeah, they they really liked uh, the view and stuff, and and like I said, you know, there's uh, the the lodging there is just gorgeous and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm encouraging anybody that's looking for for a great place to go in South Africa. You know, for one, uh, the Cape offers a really wide variety of animals, and and the lodging is great, and and the the prices are the best, and the the food was great, and uh, I guess uh, I just can't say enough about about your place. So that's why we wanted to get you on the phone today and talk with you a little bit. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm I'm quite glad. Yeah, that we could hook up, and if we can get any more people that's interested, you know, it would be wonderful if they can uh, contact you, and we can set up a wonderful trip. Yeah, it could be a trip of a lifetime. Yep. Yep, that's what we're hoping to, and uh, and we're opening up a, a museum here real shortly, and okay. and uh, then we're gonna have lots of folks coming and going out of our uh, big game hunting museum. Uh, it'll be educational about the positive aspects of hunting, and and then in and out of that, we're gonna try to set up some folks to actually come with us when we come over there, and, you know, and hunt during the okay. same weeks if we can. But you know, if not, it's fine. They they'll still have a great time with you. No, exactly. It just depends how you set it up. No, but wonderful. It is great talking to you, and, and I hope you know, everybody listening, come see South Africa. Sunny South Africa is a beautiful place, and we'd love to have you. All right. Well, that's uh, that's good. If there's anything else, uh, if you got any good specials ever or anything you want us to advertise to try to lure some folks on over there, by all means, drop me an email and let me know, Harry. So. Okay, I will do that. I'll send you something. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. You have a great. You. you bet. Have a great day, Harry. You too. All bye right. Bye bye. Well, that was great. We got to talk with uh, Harry Forey from uh, Kakuyu Lodge, and uh, we'll take a quick break, Brandon. We'll come back and see who we can visit with next. And great place to go over there in South Africa. And uh, we'll take a quick break. Be right back. <laughs> 